pretty good. Yeah, well, I'm feeling pretty good. It's, uh, uh, I, I told everybody that uh, I'll be 90 next April. I don't know whether I got any years left, but I think I'm in the last half. <laughs> That's a new 80, right? Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Right. The newspaper is talking about trying to find the oldest person in town. And they found one gal that's 102. Yeah, I know there's, yeah, there's, I know there's, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just a young pup. <laughs> but, uh, so you were at the beginnings of the act theater? No, I wasn't at the beginning. The first, the first play I was in was Our Wilderness uh, back in 1974. And uh, I, I tried out for it because uh, I've always, I, I've, done some theater work in college and in high school, and I thought maybe it would be kind of fun. They, they, they had a part in it by a character named McComber that only had about 15 lines. And I thought, well, that'd be a good place to start. And uh, so I tried out, and Mona Paling, the director, called me and said, I'm not going to cast you as McComber. And I said, well, it's all right. I had a good time at tryouts. Uh, she said, I'm gonna, I want you to be Nat Miller, the lead. <laughs> So I broke in, but I broke in with uh, uh, Shoni Mushler, Frank O'Brien, uh, Glenn Parsons, uh, Ryan Earhart. I had a whole bunch of people to pick me up if I fell on my face. <laughs> now that was a pretty cohesive group. Was oh the yeah. Same people at well, did uh, different plays, or did you mix uh, around? Some, somebody at one time uh, tried to make a list of all the people that had ever had anything to do with the theater actors, stage manager, whatever. And uh, they figured it was close to 2,000 people that have, that have uh, either acted or done makeup or stage manager or director or whatever. So there's a lot of people that have had their thumb in that community theater over the years. Well, what is it that makes people want to act? You know, I, it's leaving your own person and becoming somebody else. That's right. That, you, you put your finger right on it. it uh, uh, when you go out there on the stage, you are, you, you try to be the character that you're playing. And uh, you may have um, an over, overdue mortgage and a dirty diaper pail at home, but you got to forget about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, just c concentrate on... Uh, I directed... Uh, uh, a play that I wrote for children uh, on, based on Christmas. And uh, uh, we had third and fourth graders in the, in the cast. And uh, I had about 50 for tryouts, and I could only use about 20. But uh, we had a narrator, and the narrator got to the place where the uh, scripture says the time came for her to be delivered, and she brought birth, or, you know, all that stuff and, and in the manger. and. Uh, this little third grade gal, Mariah Howe, her name was, uh, uh, looked down, we had a crib, and, uh, and she looked down and she put the baby in the crib. And then without anything in the script to tell her, she looked up at Joseph and she picked up the baby and held it up for Joseph to look at. And I said, you know, that's not in the script. She said, but I think that's what Mary would have done. Well, that's, that's, that's good, good acting when you, when you, when you're so completely into the part. Uh, when we did uh, Fiddler on the Roof, all the uh, Jews are leaving Anatevka and, uh, uh, to, because they're being kicked out by the Russians. And all these old crusty characters, Lowell and Joanne Barr and Neil and Hazel Peterson, they were all in, in a little line carrying what we could carry going out the door. And I looked around, and all of those people had tears on their faces. It was so moving. You know, we, we were so completely into being the Jews that were leaving on a Tevka that were crying, <laughs> you know. So and it's that, a way to experience life uh, without leaving. Yeah, and, and that, and, yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, uh, no, it's always, uh, it's, uh, a lot of the stuff that's happened is uh, disastrous at the time, but in uh, the years that go by, it's funny. <laughs> when we did uh, Dracula, 
we had a wire from the sound booth down to the stage, and we had a bat with electric eyes that sailed down over the audience to the stage. The wire broke one night and uh, uh, in the middle of the play, and uh, Ann uh, was directing and she said, we've got to have the bat. And uh, uh, so I, she, I was the stage manager, so I'm out in the audience crawling around among all these people's feet. I'm sorry, lady, I'm not trying to touch your ankles. I'm just looking for my bat. <laughs> Dracula, yeah. So, is, that, is that what the... Huh? How was that received? Dracula, uh, you know, well, kind of a conservative town, and that's almost well, like words. that wasn't the problem. But with, there's so much uh, sound effects and you know, visual effects nowadays, you can't scare people anymore. So the, 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 actually, uh, we almost played it like a comedy because you, you know, it's supposed to be a frightening uh, play. But uh, you know, the kids have seen so much uh, if, you know, visual effects on TV that you can't scare them anymore. Mm -hmm. they, just, they just, you know, you know the Wolfman or Dracula or Frankenstein can come out and they'll laugh at them. <laughs> you know? So it's... Uh, uh, what is good theater today? What do you think? Well, what do you like to go see yet? Uh, there's a there's a dichotomy there. Uh, the professional, or not professional, but the the theatrical people want to do some avant-garde stuff. You know, they want to do new stuff and stuff like Equus and and so on. Uh, but the people that run the box office want to make money, so they want to do. Our town and South Pacific, and you know, they want to do the old chestnuts, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and you got to have a little of both. Uh, people like to like to be able to uh, uh, say if a girl comes in, that's that's my driver, so okay, uh, she won't be here for another five minutes at least. Well, but, well, we got uh, five minutes more. We got to pile in here. Yeah, but uh, uh, have you seen some? People move on from the local theater to do. Things? Oh, I, I've seen you know uh, Roger or Dave Botham got tried out for South Pacific, and uh, he was the gal on the stage that had the uh, brazier made out of two half coconuts, <laughs> and, and he had a ball. But uh, he left that night. And he said, "Never again. <laughs> I've done it. Been there once." <laughs> and and uh, but. Uh, a lot of people have, have uh, you know, I've been stage manager for Sue Jorgensen, I think, seven or eight times. I love being stage. The, yeah, talk about that job. Well, uh, uh, you know, the actors and actresses on stage are always concerned about their lines and their entrances and their exits and their props and well, am I supposed to go to the window or am I supposed to yawn or what am I supposed to do? and. Uh, uh, and that's good, but the uh, the actors, uh, there may be a line in Act Two that the audience howls at because it's funny, and the actors don't know why. It's because of something that happened in Act One when that actor wasn't there, but the audience saw it. So, but so the actors don't always see the. They're supposed to see the show, show as a whole. You're supposed to watch and see what everybody else is doing. But uh, the stage manager and the director see the whole thing. They see how each actor and each part and each prop and each scene relates to the whole show. So it was really fun to, to be stage manager. I, 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 it's I, a very important job. Oh, it's a very, director. yeah, well, you, you sit on the front of the stage with a book and when the actors are off book and they're supposed to have it memorized, if they can't remember, uh, and they're standing there, and it's their line, they can call for a line, and the stage manager is going to be constantly looking at the book uh, to, to give them the line that, that they got next. So it's. Uh, Do you still remember some stage lines that? Come oh sure. Or? Yeah, I think my the the greatest line that I that I know is from Harvey. Gilwood uh, uh, P. Dowd is. Uh, asked how he got acquainted with this big white rabbit. And he said, well, I was up at the corner of Jackson and 17th Street, uh, you know the area, uh, and I, all of a sudden I heard this voice say, good afternoon, Mr. Dowd. 
And I turned around and looked, and there was this great big white rabbit. Well, that didn't surprise me any, talking to me. That didn't surprise me any, because when you've lived in a town as long as I have, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. <laughs> Not that it's a rabbit. Yeah. But, Do you uh, still see the rabbit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has one of the, one of the most telling lines in, in theater. He says, my mother always uh, told me, Elwood, she always called me Elwood, Elwood, in this life you always got to be either so very rich or so very pleasant. I've tried rich, I like pleasant. <laughs> so true, so true. So very true. Well, it's about time for your lunch. Is there anything you want to add in here? Oh, no, it's, it's, oh, uh, uh, that, only that for almost 40 years, the theater gave me, uh, I got a lot of education. I, I took some uh, playwriting courses in, in college, and uh, there's nothing more humiliating than writing a play and then going to the theater uh, anonymously to see people up there, well, well, that's a line, but I don't know what the heck the author meant by that. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. <laughs> uh, so you play writing and meaning behind the lines of it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it, it's, uh, I learned an awful lot uh, from it. Uh, I had some marvelous memories, and I made some wonderful people. Theater people are, are, are special. Uh, they, they, they can be temperamental. They can yell and scream at each other and holler, and they can swear, and they can get mad. It's because they're trying so darn hard to make it work. And uh, uh, I, I, I think of two of our people that got into it one night, and uh, they both swore they'd never be in the theater again, and they never talked to each other again. Well, the next morning, they hugged each other, and the next morning, they went out and had coffee together. You know, yeah. uh, the, the, uh, uh, Conflict is actually good for the theater. Yeah, the, the affection between the the cast and the crew, and the cast always knows, uh, you know, you, we, we may, as an actor, we may take the curtain calls, but we're taking them for all those people backstage that uh, did all the work that, that uh, got us there. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a community act. How and, do you move those sets and props and actors without having a, an issue? Or maybe there are issues that I don't know about, but... Uh, well, the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there it is. Uh, here, let me the, get you disconnected and we'll get you out of here. Yeah, the classic is uh, uh, Bill Morris and Frank O'Brien were playing the two old hoofers in, uh, um, in a uh, play uh, the, uh, about two guys or old men that are trying to re, re do their vaudeville days. And uh, they're mad at each other. They're 70 years old and they're sitting on a stage facing that way. And all of a sudden, the phone on the table in the middle rang. And it's not supposed to ring. The sound booth had screwed up. And the phone rang again. And they both looked at it and the phone rang again. Well, it's going to keep ringing. And finally, Morris picked it up and said, Hello! Here, it's for you. 